Hi everyone, Dr. Matt here, and in this video, we're gonna look at first pass metabolism. In this video, we'll first look at a definition of what this term means. Then we'll have a look at a schematic drawing of the gastrointestinal tract and how oral medications will be influenced the way it is absorbed, metabolized, taken via the blood, the port of blood to the liver, where the liver can maybe metabolize it and influence its metabolism to finally to see how much of the drug that we initially took gains access to the systemic circulation. And then finally, we'll come across to this figure and we'll compare how an oral medication, which is influenced by the first pass metabolism, compares to an IV medication in respect to its bioavailability. Okay, so let's start with a definition. What is first pass metabolism? Sometimes also known as the first pass effect or the pre-systemic metabolism. So the first pass metabolism is a phenomenon of drug metabolism, which leads to the reduction in concentration reaching the systemic circulation. So in reference to an oral medication, if we were to give a drug orally, let's say 150 milligrams, how much of that 150 milligrams will reach the systemic circulation. That's basically determined by the first pass metabolism. So what the drug has to do is it has to come through this long tract. It has to get across the gut wall. It has to get taken by the blood, which we call the portal vein, the portal hepatic system, taken to the liver. How much of that drug potentially could be metabolized by the liver to see what percentage of the dose gets into the systemic circulation, this is essentially impacted by first pass metabolism. Another term that I wanna to bring to your attention is the term bioavailability. This is essentially how much of the drug that's given reaches the systemic circulation. So why is it important for a drug to get into the systemic circulation? Well, basically, if you can get a drug into your blood, it can go everywhere in the body. So depending on what the drug's there to do, so what's it been given for, what's its effect, hopefully, you probably need to get it into the blood to, to, for it to do its job. So when we come across here, if we were to give a drug through intravenous or IV administration, it means the drug gets straight access to your systemic circulation. So that IV method is 100%. So if you were to give a drug say 150 milligrams, IV, 100% of it, so all 150 milligrams will get access into the blood. Where compared to the oral, based on how big of an effect this first pass metabolism will determine how much of that percent, so how much of that 150 milligrams will get into the systemic circulate, circulation. And we call that the fraction or the bioavailability of the oral compared to what it would be if we gave it in IV form. So I'll come back to this a bit later when we do an example of drug X. So let's say we give a capsule in, a, in, in an oral medication form. It has to go into the mouth, past the esophagus, through the stomach, where most of the absorption takes place, which is in the small intestine. So how well is that drug absorbed? That's important because if it's not well absorbed, not much will get into the systemic circulation. So some drugs that have very poor absorption, an example of that is heparin. So heparin is a drug, it's an anticoagulant, which means it thins the blood, okay? If we were to give heparin orally, once it reaches the small intestine, because it's a large molecule and it has a charge to it, it's not well absorbed across the gut wall. So most of the drug will end up in the toilet. So it'll have a very low bioavailability or it has a very strong first pass effect, which means not much passes through into the systemic circulation. So therefore heparin, we don't give it orally because it has a very poor absorption. We rather give it as an injection and it works better that way. It has a higher bioavailability. Okay, that's the first part, which is absorption. Certain things that will affect absorption would be, do we have the medication on a full stomach or an empty stomach? That might have an impact. Another thing that's important is how quick 
it's moving through the gastrointestinal tract. So this is known as motility. If you have a very quick motility, let's say the person has diarrhea, it's not gonna get a good absorption, it's gonna have a poor absorption, therefore a low bioavailability. So this is gonna be important in different age groups, pediatrics versus the elderly, they're gonna have different transit times, different motility, which will impact the absorption. Another important factor for absorption is how good the blood flow to the gut is. If there's a poor blood flow, even if we get the drug across the gut wall, there's no blood to take it to the liver. So blood flow is also important. And that's why drugs are usually given with food because during food, you get better blood supply to the gut. All right, so that's absorption done. The next thing to consider is how much the drug is metabolized in the intestine, okay? So metabolism can happen in a number of ways, usually through enzymes. So the metabolism could happen in the lumen. So we could have enzymes in the lumen, digestive enzymes that are usually there for digestion, such as amylase, protease, lipase. We have uh, enzymes in the gut wall. We have enzymes produced by the bacteria. All of these can have an effect on the way that the drug is metabolized. Another example of this could be insulin. Insulin is a medication that, well actually insulin is a hormone which is important for regulating blood sugar levels. In some patients where they have diabetes, so they don't produce enough insulin, they need to take insulin to regulate their blood sugar levels. Now if we were to give insulin orally, what would happen because insulin is a protein, once it's in the lumen of the small intestine, it will meet enzymes from the pancreas, which will start to digest it, which then means it can't get access to the systemic circulation. So it has a very low bioavailability or a very strong first pass effect. Therefore, we don't give insulin orally. Rather, we usually give it subcutaneously, which means under the skin in the fat. So that's another example. But let's say we have good absorption, we have no metabolism in the gut wall, we get a good amount of, of the drug into the portal vein, and then it gets taken to the liver. But in this case, let's say the drug is highly metabolized by the liver, which means it's metabolized so strongly, the liver doesn't allow much of the drug into the systemic circulation. An example here is GTN, which stands for glycyl trinitrate, which is a nitroglycerin. This is a drug that dilates blood vessels, particularly important for dilating the blood vessels in the heart, which can be used for patients with angina. If you were to give GTN orally, the drug would get absorbed across fine, it would get taken to the liver fine, but the liver would metabolize it heavily, so no GTN would reach into the systemic circulation, so a very poor bioavailability. So rather, GTN is given under the tongue because this region of the gastrointestinal tract doesn't pass through the liver. It bypasses the liver and goes directly into the systemic circulation. So therefore, it all has a good bioavailability. All right, so hopefully that makes sense in terms of the different ways we can have an impact by the first pass metabolism, how much of the oral drug reaches the systemic circulation. Finally, I wanna draw your attention to this particular figure, and we're gonna give an example of drug, drug X. As I said, let's give drug X 150 milligrams, and if we were to give it IV, 150 milligrams of it, or 100%, or one, would reach the systemic circulation immediately. So it has a very good bioavailability. And then slowly over time, as the drug's being used in the body, being metabolism and excreted, it will slowly, the concentration will slowly drop off. But what if, what happens if we give the 150 milligrams of drug X orally? So let's say we give it here, it gets taken through the stomach, it gets absorbed across into the blood. But let's say we lose a bit. So only 130 milligrams makes it into the portal vein. Okay, so we've lost about 20 milligrams. So we've lost 20 milligrams here. Then it gets taken to the liver and the liver excretes 90 milligrams of it, okay? Which means 
only 30 milligrams is left to go into the systemic circulation. Okay, so it has had a strong first pass effect. Only 30 milligrams of the drug reaches the blood. So if we'll, to calculate that, 30 divided by 150 is 20% or 0.2, which is about there, 0.2. Which basically means 20% of the drug given initially ends up in the blood, okay? When compared, if you gave it orally, which would be 100%. And that's going to be essentially the, the fraction or the bioavailability of the drug. Now, depending on how, if 20% is enough to work effectively in the body, we may have to look at alternatives of giving the drug rather than give it orally. We may have to use another method of administration to make it more effective in the body. So hopefully now you've understood what first-pass metabolism is and these examples have helped with your understanding.